Good morning to you, saints of the Most High. On this morning, we continue our series, Living in the Last Days. This morning, our message is, Jesus is coming again. If there is ever a time we need to hear a message like this that is sober to remind us to take our lives serious. It's these last and evil days that we are living in. Jesus is coming again. But before we get into the Word of God, come on, let's worship Him. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Come on, sing it with me. And I'll stand, glory to God. And I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered, and all I am is yours. Come on and sing it with me, church. And I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand. My soul, Lord, to you surrendered, and all I am is yours. Tell him I'll stand. And I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand. My soul, Lord, to you surrendered, and all I am is yours. Come on, worship him with me this morning. I'll stand, I'll stand, I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand. My soul, Lord, to you surrendered, and all I am is yours. And I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. And I'll stand. My soul, Lord, to you surrendered, and all I am is yours. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith and we pray for our wonderful viewing audience here this morning. Lord, if they don't hear nothing else, let them hear the urgency that they need to make sure that they are ready for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is coming again. He absolutely is coming again. Wake your people up. Those who are asleep at the wheel, wake them up. Those who started to slack up in their walk with you, and started to lose their conviction and started to give up on living a holy life and felt like it was a waste of time, get a hold of them this morning and let them sense the urgency of the Holy Ghost that they need to be ready because Jesus is coming again. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints. We continue our series this morning, Living in the Last Days. And on this morning, specifically, we're talking about Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. And I want to begin in the book of Genesis chapter 6. I want to read verse 5, verse 6, and 11. And then I'll jump into Matthew 24. And I'll also read from 1 Timothy chapter 4. You'll see all the scriptures on the screen. Now, this is, this is in the days of Noah. Verse 5, Genesis 6 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, 
and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him on his heart. God was sorry that he made man. Verse 11, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. When you read those scriptures in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, 6, and 11, sounds like sounds like we're reading the scriptures from today, what's happening right now. Just look at the news. Just look at the newspaper. I mean, come on, somebody. Just look at what's, what's being portrayed online. I mean, the world is filled with violence. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy every way you turn, every nation you look into. Violence, violence, violence. All of these, all of these are signs that's pointing to the end of time that Jesus is getting ready to come. I want to read something from the book of First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The apostle Paul, under the anointing of God, writes, Now the Spirit speaks expressly or clearly that in the latter times, in the last days, some, thank God not all, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I mean, when you hear some stuff that people believe, you know it can only be conjured up by the devil himself, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience said with a hot iron. People are being people are being seduced by doctrines of devils. That's, that's false teachings. That's false religions out there. That's teaching stuff that's literally straight from the mouth of Satan himself. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I want to take you now into the book of Matthew chapter 24, as Jesus continues giving us all these prophetic warnings and signs and signals that it's nearing the time when he's getting ready to come back to earth. I mean, look at what we read. Look at what we read that took place in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, 6, and 11. And you're about to see why I read that to you. Notice what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 through 44. Jesus said, but as the days of Noah were, that's why I read that first, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus said exactly how it was in the days of Noah. Jesus said when he returned the second time, that's exactly how it's going to be on the earth. And we read, we read in the days of Noah, let me, let me read it again. Verse 5 of Genesis 6. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's exactly what we are, what we are saying. Look at what comes across the television. You, you're, trying to, you're trying to look for something online. You're trying to order something for you and your family. They got filth everywhere. Come on, somebody. You got to close certain pages sometimes because of things that's trying to pop up on your screen while you surfing the internet doing stuff. You're being responsible. You know what you're supposed to. That's why I got a lot of a lot of block stuff to block certain ads all planted all through my computer to just block the trash. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? But Jesus said in verse 37 of Matthew 24, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus said exactly what was happening in the day of Noah. That's how it's going to be when I return. He said, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And Noah warned those people. He warned them. He said, it's going to rain. He said, God is going to send a rain. It's going to flood. Now, you know they thought he was nuts because up until this time, they had never seen rain. It had never rained on the face of the whole earth. So they thought rain, water's going to come down out of the sky. This man is crazy. They thought he's nuts. Noah's warning them and telling them 
it's about the flood. There's coming a big flood. I mean, he tried to tell them, but they, they weren't listening to him. They made fun of him. They mocked him. They thought he was silly. They thought he was extreme. They thought, who's going to pay attention to this guy? He's crazy. And man, he's, they saw Bill and, that's a giant ship. That's a big boat. We never seen anything like it. Noah was building that boat that would have been able to carry all of them. But they laughed at him. They scorned him. They thought he was absolutely crazy. And you know what? Look at the similarities as we preach the gospel. There are people, there are people who want to confront us and type foolishness online. Ah, oh, that's not true. That's not real. And they say, oh, none of this Christianity stuff is real. None of this stuff about Jesus is coming back is real. Guess what? It's going to happen again. Jesus said when he come, a lot of folks are not going to be ready. And that's exactly how they treated the message that Noah declared to them. He warned them and told them a flood was coming. They laughed at him. He built that big ship and not a one of them got on board except Noah and his family. The animals had more sense than man. Isn't that sad? God told the animals to go on board and the animals started getting on the ship. Now you know that's, that's shameful. That animals have more sense than human beings. Sounds very similar to you. And it sounds like we're right back there. I think so. Watch this. Jesus said, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. A lot of people are not going to be ready when Jesus come. But as a preacher of the gospel, we got to do everything in our power. We got to make the altar calls. We got to warn people, your sin will find you out. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. My God, the Bible says the soul that sinned shall surely die. Hell is absolutely real. Heaven is absolutely real. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 40 through 44. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. He's talking about the rapture. For the trump of the Lord shall sound the dead and Christ will rise. And we who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet them in the air. And so we will ever be with the Lord. Can you imagine that? A couple, one saved, the other not saved. One taken away and the other left behind. What about what about people on a bus, people on a plane? Lord, have mercy mercy help us if all the pilots are saved and the rapture takes place they, i'm telling you something is coming to this earth jesus warned us he told us it's going to happen and all of the signs and all the things that's happening right now in our world and in this country and other nations it's all pointing to the second coming of the lord jesus christ and you and i as christians we better make sure our anchor holds we better make sure our hearts are right with God because Jesus is coming. He said, I'm coming out of day and an hour that you think not. Let's keep moving. Jesus said, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord do come. But know this, know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what hour would watch the thief would break into his house or come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus said, when he comes, it's going to be at an hour that you think not. I don't know about you. I want to be ready. In fact, I am ready. I'm not trying to get ready. I'm ready. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be for the Lord. Oh, I ain't perfect. But I live a lifestyle of repentance. When I'm wrong, I repent. When I'm wrong, I make it right. The question to you is this morning, are you ready when Jesus comes? Are you ready? Because he's coming at an hour when people are going to be partying, all kinds of stuff going to be going on. And of course, people are going to be living right too. But I'm, I'm, sending, I'm sounding the alarm for those who think they can just live their life as if there's no consequences, who, who want to just live life and be rebellious and be worldly 
and turn their back on the gospel message and turn their back on church and turn their back on the things of God. As if there is no consequences, I got news for you. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Can someone type below this video? Jesus is coming. Let's spread it all over Facebook. Spread it all over YouTube. Spread it all over social media. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Take this message and share it with all your friends and family members, those saved and those not saved. The ones who are saved, it'll help them to tighten up. The ones who are not saved, it'll warn them and help them to get right with God. But Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming again, saints. He is coming again. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And he said, I'm coming out a day and an hour that you think not. But he said, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. You need to hear it. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. He's coming again, saints. Glory to God. Are you ready to meet him? If the trumpet would have sound right now and he would have split the sky open and descend, are you ready to meet Jesus? He's coming again. Doesn't matter who doesn't believe it. What do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus died on Calvary Cross? Do you believe they buried him in a borrowed tomb for three days? Do you believe that he rose again? Do you believe that he ascended up to heaven? The Bible says there were over 500 people who saw it with their own eyes when Jesus went back into heaven and was received into the clouds. He's coming again. The angel said to the apostles, this same Jesus, the same way you saw him left and going to heaven, he is coming just like he left. He's coming again. Someone, I want you to bow your heads. I feel a mighty conviction. I feel a mighty conviction. I feel a mighty conviction. Stay right there in that flow, Michaela. I feel a mighty conviction. For you Christians who have been slackening up in your walk with God, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Cleanse me, wash me, purify me. Wash my life. I repent of my sins. I repent for slackening up. I repent for not spending time with you. I repent for not reading my Bible. I repent for flirting and playing with the world and allowing sin to come into my life unchecked. I repent, Lord. I repent. I repent. Forgive me, Lord. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You got to repent and make it right. For you who have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on Calvary Cross for my sins. They buried you in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand and soon and very soon, you're coming again. From this day, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. If you prayed that prayer with me and meant it with all of your heart, let me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, be the first to say to you, welcome into the family of God. I want you to type below this video right now. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. I'm telling you there is nothing like getting saved and giving your life to him. It was January the 3rd, 2.30 in the morning when I surrendered my life to Jesus. My life has been changed. I've been forgiven. I've never been the same since. I feel like many are coming into the kingdom of God this morning.
You that prayed that prayer with me and meant it with all of your hearts, I want you to type below this video right now, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Type below this video, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Welcome into the family of God. Listen, for the rest of you, I want to give you an opportunity to support this ministry as we preach the gospel through a daily morning prayer broadcast that goes into 195 nations. Support us. Get behind the gospel. Amen. We are winning souls to Jesus. Support the work of Sean Pinder Ministries and Miracle Healing Center. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have downloaded the ministry app on your smartphones and your devices. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888, and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Main Pastor Amy, we love you. We care about you. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. When you subscribe, make sure you click on your notifications and turn it on. That way you'll receive our daily morning prayer broadcast every day. Any other platform you're watching us through, make sure follow our ministry so you will not miss any of the daily morning prayer broadcasts. We love you. God bless you. And we continue this series. We'll see you again on tomorrow. God bless.